Hello community, it's Courtney. Thanks for having us, Grand Park. We're here to do some yoga, our yoga a la retreat. So welcome, it's so nice to have you. So I want to focus today um, on, I've been talking a lot about being in the moment and I'm finding my yoga philosophy more helpful than ever. Um, there can be a lot of external distractions, a lot of pulls in a lot of directions. Um, and I, I am in no way saying that we shouldn't pay attention to the hurt and the suffering of the world. Um, but I know in my own experience, if I don't become steady and stable, I just start to kind of flail around in the distraction. And I want to be strong and steady and peaceful so I can show up and help. So yoga really helps to remind me to make moments for myself, to go inward, to be still, and to notice what is true, what is here, so that I can build a strong table to support others. So we're gonna start our class today with a little grounding exercise. So get comfortable wherever you are, maybe doing this part in a chair, maybe coming to the earth and grounding down. And then I'm going to invite us all to soften the eyes closed. And if for some reason that does not feel right to you, you can also take a steady gaze at a single point. So here, Really let yourself touch down. So if you're seated on the floor, really letting your sit bones ground down. Whatever you feel touching the earth, really let it touch down. If you're in a chair, really let your seat ground down, but also really let your feet touch earth. And allow that touching of earth to ground you into this moment. Start to notice your breath. Start to choose a breath that draws you into this moment together. So that might mean a fuller breath. That might mean a slower breath. And then I'm going to ask us all to place our hands over the heart, maybe even feeling into the beat of your own heart. And just getting still enough for a moment to acknowledge whatever is in our heart. So what is present in your heart today? See if you can be brave to allow it to be there, to acknowledge it, to hold it like you might a friend's heart. And without trying to change it or fix it, just being in the space of your heart. Maybe even anchoring a few breaths in your heart. And then with your hands on your heart, maybe setting an intention for practice today to take care of that heart. So what do you need right now? What did you show up to remember about yourself or to recover about yourself? Is there a word or a phrase? that can help you do that today on your mat. Because if you're not taking care of your own heart, it's really hard to show up and take care of anyone else's. So give yourself the space today to take care of your own heart. Let's seal our palms together in a gesture over the heart to make that little pact to take care of our own hearts on the mat today. 
From here, fluttering your eyes open. Let's take the chin into the chest and then the left ear goes to the left shoulder. So just finding a little opening for the right side of our neck. Taking a couple of those slow, full breaths there. Chin falls back into the chest, right ear goes to right shoulder, finding a little space for the left side of your neck. It might help to soften the gaze closed or to take a gaze at a single point. And then we're just going to move into some half neck rolls. So nothing too forceful or fancy. Just allowing ourselves to get into relationship to honor what's happening in the neck. Maybe even just to acknowledge it. Sometimes by just acknowledging whatever is happening, it can help us just land into the moment. From here, the chin lifts to stack the head back over the spine, little no motions. So it might feel good when you make a no to pause to send your opposite shoulder back. And then we're just going to make some yes motions. So lifting up, opening across the throat and then allowing the chin to fall into the chest, allowing the weight of the head to stretch the shoulders. So just a few slow yeses. From here, lifting your chin to stack so that your head is over your spine. And let's just make a few shoulder rolls. So sending your shoulders back and around and down. And then sending your shoulders forward and around and down. Really nice. Let's find our way to a child's pose. So child's pose is knees wide. So if you have a mat, it's typically around the width of your mat. If you don't have a mat, it's a little wider than your hips. Big toes come together to touch, melt your heart forward, and then the hands can either be up and overhead or some people really like to have your hands down by your feet. Make sure your forehead is touching something. So if the forehead doesn't touch the ground comfortably, I would really recommend taking the time to grab a pillow to rest underneath the forehead. And the same thing with the hips. If the hips don't feel comfortable here or they're kind of suspended in the air, take a moment to rest something underneath your hips. Allow your heart to surrender towards the earth. Allow your entire body to be supported by the ground. And then from here, making your way up to hands and knees. So if your knees are sensitive, you can always put something underneath your knees, a towel, a blanket, spread your fingers nice and wide. The wrists are stacked underneath the shoulders, knees are stacked underneath the hips. We'll connect some breath to movement. As you inhale, belly drops, heart rises, like the back of your head could touch your tailbone. And then exhale, press into your knuckles, round in your upper back, like your nose could touch your belly button. Inhale, belly drops, heart rises. Exhale, curl in your spine. Inhale, belly drops, heart rises. Exhale, curl in your spine. Inhale, belly drops, heart rises. Exhale, curl in your spine. 
Find a neutral spine. Keep your knees where they are. We'll walk the arms up and overhead into a big V. And then once again, setting the forehead either down on the floor or on a pillow. So the arms are in a V. The arms are active here. So instead of being passive in your arms, activate your arms by sending your inner arms in towards your face. So we're firing up the triceps here. We're sending the shoulders away from the ears. We're melting the heart down towards the earth. So this pose is called puppy dog pose. Notice what's touching earth. Let your hands touch down, your shins, your knees, your forehead. This is a really nice alternative to downward facing dog. If that's not comfortable in your body or if your wrists don't like it, you can always come down here. So if this is feeling good, you're welcome to stay here. If you're ready to come into down dog, tuck your toes, arms stay as they are. Grounding down into your feet. And then it might feel nice today to take up a little more space. So maybe your feet come wide as your mat. Maybe your hands come a little wider than your shoulders. Let your head go here. Inner arms are still spiraling in. We're pressing into the knuckles. You can have as much bend in your knees as you need. The heart's reaching back, the head releases. And then walk your hands back for your feet, finding yourself into a forward fold. So the feet can stay wide. You can also take your feet into hips distance. Honor the backs of your legs, maybe by bending your knees a little bit more, letting your head go. From here, hands are gonna come to the shins. We're gonna come into three halfway lifts. So as you inhale, heart reaches forward, flat back, and then exhale, release yourself to a fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. One last time. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, and then pressing into your feet, rolling yourself up, stacking each part of yourself, each part of your spine on itself. Mountain pose, so palms come out to the side, feet are hips distance. We're gonna come into some sun salutations, a great way to connect with the moment, to breathe and connect breath with movement. So one breath, one motion. Exhale your breath out. Inhale, draw your arms tall, maybe look up. Exhale, fold the body in half, let your head go, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold, release your head. Inhale, draw your arms tall to the sky. Exhale, hands come into your heart. Feel your feet glued to the same space. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms draw tall to sky. Exhale, hands come to your heart. From here, we're gonna take a really wide leg straddle, so you'll come to the long edge of your mat. We're gonna take the heels in and the toes are gonna to go out. So there's probably like three to four feet between your feet, depending on how long your legs are. And then go ahead and bend your knees like you're sitting into a chair. Knees go back, ground down into your feet, hands come to your heart. Shoulders come away from the ears, soften in your jaw. Good morning, good afternoon to the thighs here.
Loop your belly back into your spine. Keep grounding your feet down. As you inhale, press into your feet. Extend your arms tall to the sky like a big X. And then exhale, grounding back down into your thighs. Hands can come to the heart. We're going to pause here. Let the breath keep flowing through. Keep anchoring yourself in whatever is touching the earth. So feet are grounding down, thighs are sinking down. As you inhale, press into your feet, extend your arms like a big X. One more time, exhaling into your big squat, hands at the heart, jaw soft. Feet haven't moved, so feet are glued down, belly scooping back. As you inhale, press into your feet, big X. And then from here, hands to the hips. We're going to take the right toes in and the left toes are going to go forward. So you might be facing the front of your space, the back of your space, it doesn't matter. We're taking heel to arch alignment. So the heel of the front foot is in the arch of the back foot. So the back foot's angled in at like a 45. And then we're going to come back to a big sink of our left thigh. Fingertips reach out. So warrior two, gazing over your left middle finger. If your shoulders are feeling really tense today, it might be nice to flip your palms up. That allows the shoulders to draw in and soften down. So steady breath, steady gaze over your palm or your left middle finger. As you inhale, extend your left leg straight. The hands come back to the hips, left toes come in, right foot goes out, heel to arch alignment, we're sinking into the right hip, and then the arms go out from the shoulders. So shoulders come away from ears, gazing either over your right middle finger, or you could take that variation to flip the palms up. So what's happening in the jaw, what's happening in the face, feel your feet as the anchor of this pose. Couple more breaths here. And then as you inhale, extend your right leg straight, hands come to the hips. This time we're gonna take the toes in, the heels are gonna go out. Lift up in your heart, send your shoulders down. And then as you exhale, find yourself in a fold. So the hands might touch down, they might not. You could put pillows underneath your hands. We're pressing slightly into the outer edges of the feet, releasing in the neck. And we'll just take a few breaths here to rest. So feel whatever is touching down, really allow it to touch down. Allow yourself to be held up by whatever is anchoring you down. From here, hands come to your hips. Inhale, halfway lift, press into your feet. Exhale all the way up, press into your feet. We're gonna come in one more time each side for warrior two. So left toes face out, the right foot stays just as it was, so slight kind of 45 degree angle. Arms reach out, gazing either over your left middle finger or your left palm if you wanna flip your palms up. Steady gaze over your hand or your middle finger. We're going to connect some breath and movement here this time. So this will be our exhale. As you inhale, lengthen your left leg, arms reach tall to the sky. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, lengthen everything tall. 
Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, extend and lengthen. Exhale, warrior two. Hands come to your hips. Lengthen your left leg. Left toes come in, right toes go back. Finding your way to warrior two on the right. So heel to arch alignment, big sink of your right hip, reaching your fingertips out, maybe softening the palms up. Steady your gaze, steady your breath. Let your exhale come out. As you inhale, lengthen, extend your arms up and overhead. And then exhale, warrior two. Inhale, right leg goes straight, arms reach tall. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, lengthen, extend. Exhale, warrior two. Hands come to your hips. Lengthen your right leg straight. One more forward fold here. So toes go in, heels go out. Find a lift of your heart, lengthen your spine. And then as you exhale, forward fold. So you can have bend in your knees. You can have hands stacked on pillows. Slight pressing of the outer edges of the feet. Definitely let your head and your neck go. And then feel your feet touching earth, maybe your hands touching earth or pillows. From here, hands come to your hips, press into your feet, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, all the way to stand. Heel toe your feet together. Find your way to mountain pose. So we're going to come into tree pose, balance pose. And we're really going to use this idea of grounding whatever is touching down to feel connected to balance. I would really recommend today, I know I say it all the time, but maybe play with using a wall today as another place to ground yourself. So we'll start on the left leg here. So maybe taking your left hand to a wall and then really just noticing your left leg. So maybe lifting up in your left toes, spreading them wide, grounding them down. Feel your entire left foot connected to the earth. Left that thigh is pressing back slightly. Right hand is on the right hip. And then choose a gaze point here. So something steady to focus your eyes on. Feel your hand at the wall. Or if you have your hand on your hip, hand on the hip. Keep grounding down into your left standing leg. And then the right foot gets light. Right foot comes in at the ankle. Really today, let your toes of your right foot touch down. So as much touching earth as this pose allows. And we're only going to move forward once we feel steady and stable. So instead of just kind of pulling your foot up into the thigh, take it little baby steps. So the left foot is grounding down. The left hand is probably maybe at the wall. Maybe you stay here connecting with your breath and your gaze point. Or taking that right foot to the calf and just kind of pausing there. Maybe taking the foot to the inner thigh. If you do have the foot on the inner thigh or the calf, pressing the left leg into the foot as much as you're pressing the foot into the leg. And then keep coming back to that point that's touching earth. So we grow our tree up from the roots of what's touching down. If you'd like to add an arm variation, you can grow your branches, you can take your hands over your heart. And then on your next exhale, releasing out of this side. So from here, maybe shaking out your left leg. Hands come to the hips, maybe positioning yourself 
against a wall. So hand comes to right hand comes to the wall. Maybe spreading the toes of the right foot wide, setting it down, sending the right thigh back slightly. Left hand comes to the hip. Find a gaze point, something at eye level that's not moving. And then maybe the left foot lightens, left knee tracks out to the side. Keep grounding down into the roots of your standing foot. Using the wall if you need it. So it's there, why not use it, right? So from stability, from the roots we rise. We don't force, we don't kind of just kind of jam the foot into the inner thigh or the calf. So pressing leg into foot as much as you're pressing foot into leg, grounding down, keep noticing that right standing foot and right standing leg as your anchor. Maybe taking your hands into a variation at the heart, maybe growing your branches, keep grounding down into your right foot. And then releasing out. Both feet come down to the floor, mountain pose. Feel both your feet rooting down. Feel your shoulders stacked over your hips, over your heels. From here, we're gonna come to legs up the wall. So those of you who know how to get into it, get into it. Those of you who are new, welcome. Uh, this pose is a great restorative pose. It does take a little setup. So I'm going to talk those of us who are new to it through the setup. So legs up the wall could really mean legs up a lot of things. So this is a closet door. Um, I have a little apartment, so I don't have a lot of wall space. So I like to use closet doors. Um, you could use a refrigerator, a cabinet, just anything that doesn't have stuff that's going to fall off if you accidentally kick it. And what you're going to do to set it up, and it really does help to set it up from the beginning, is to tuck yourself really close into, I'm going to keep saying the wall, but the door, the closet, the cabinet. So the hip, it doesn't matter which side you're on, so the hip and the shoulder are going to touch base. Like you could take a little nap against this thing. And then you're going to take your hands behind you, slide your hips forward, come down to your elbows, and again, make sure that your hip and your shoulder is flush with the wall or the cabinet or the door. And then from here, keeping as close into what you're putting your legs up as possible, send your legs up so that you're in an L shape and your bottom is flush with the wall. So if you do this and you don't set it up, you might notice that your bum is like way far away from the wall. And then you could kind of hurt yourself by kind of scooting in. So it does help to come down and take the time to set it up. So heels are stacked over knees, over hips, arms can be wide. You could also rest your hands on the body. And it's totally normal to feel tingling in the legs. This is our body reflushing reflushing is that a word <laughs> refreshing ourselves with new blood flushing old blood cycling through again so it's very normal um, some people report that it feels a little too much sometimes so if that is the case for you listen to that place the soles of your feet against the wall and then rejoin us whenever you're ready so we're going to be here for a few minutes I'm gonna be quiet to give us the space to experience this restorative pose. And it really helps in a pose where we're still to steady the mind on a single point. So for me, it's always really helpful to keep noticing my breath. You might also just keep tuned in to the sensations in the body. And anytime you notice yourself somewhere else, see if you can draw yourself back into the experience of this shape. So just a few minutes here.
So just a reminder for this last minute to keep yourself engaged in the relaxation, maybe focusing on your breath, maybe focusing on the way this pose feels in your body. So from here, starting to slide your heels down the wall where your knees just were, resting the soles of your feet, and then allowing yourself to roll over to one side, making a little pillow for your head with your inner arm. Just take a little pause here. Allow yourself to feel whatever is touching earth. Let it touch earth. And then using your free hand, press yourself up and then make your way into a comfortable position on your back. So I'm going to talk us through a little guided relaxation exercise. So you might want to take a flat position on your back. If you practice yoga a lot, that might look like Shavasana with the palms up. You could also bend your knees, rest the soles of your feet underneath your knees. You could come and lay in your bed for this part. So really choose a way where you can be completely released in your body. So if you want to add a blanket, a pillow, I'm going to recommend to soften the eyes closed here. And then once you get into your position, see if you can allow your body to really touch down, to really meet whatever is underneath it. And allowing the body to be both soft and heavy. So I'm going to talk us through an exercise that calls into different areas of ourselves. And as I do, we will notice if there's any gripping, any holding or tension. And maybe through some awareness, we can soften and release. So with the eyes closed, with the body both heavy and soft. Drawing your awareness to your feet, allowing the toes, the soles of the feet, the tops of the feet and the ankles to release. Drawing awareness up your shins and the backs of your calves, allowing your knee joints to be soft allowing the front and the backs of the thighs to release, allowing your hips to be soft and open towards the sky or the ceiling, allowing your low back to release, your middle back and your upper back, shoulders release from the ears, arms are heavy at the sides, Elbow joints, forearms, and wrists are soft. Notice what's happening in the hands. If there's any gripping or holding in the hands, maybe notice and soften in those areas. 
drawing awareness to your stomach. So notice if there's any gripping or holding in the belly. And if there is, maybe seeing if there's any room to allow the stomach to be soft. Coming into the space of the heart. Maybe notice if there's any closing or gripping around the heart. Softening the chest open, allowing whatever is in the heart to be there, to meet it with your breath. Allowing the neck and the throat to release. Allowing the jaw to release from its hinge. The tongue to be heavy inside the mouth. The cheeks release. Breath comes in and out of nose as sound comes in and out of ears. Allowing your eyelids to be heavy. Allowing the space between your eyebrows to soften. Forehead and top of head releases. And even any little parts or pieces of your hair, see if you can allow your hair to release. So from here, maybe just noticing your body soft and open on the earth, being held up by the earth. From here, we'll come into a couple minutes of Shavasana, final rest. So just giving your, yourself the space of these couple minutes to feel your body grounding down and to feel your breath moving through. So from here, just starting to bring some awareness back to your breath. Starting to find some gentle movements in your fingers and your toes. Eventually rolling over to your right side, making a pillow for your head with your inner arm. Feeling the earth underneath you as you press yourself up to a seat. Resting your hands over your heart, softening your eyes closed one more time. And just feeling into any benefits you received from grounding yourself, from settling into this moment. Hopefully there's a little more steadiness so that you can show up in this way to others today. Drawing your hands in a gesture of prayer at your heart, bowing your chin into the wisdom of your heart. Thank you all so much for being here, for creating some stability in yourself. So you can be that way with others. Thank you so, so much, Graham Park, for having us. And I will see you again very soon. Thank you, everyone.